We're really honored to have the creator, director, and co-writer of The Chosen joining us today at WGTS 91.9. Dallas Jenkins, welcome. It's good to have you here. Oh, uh, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate you. Well, we were two of the unfortunate folks that could not receive Chosen Con tickets. And so we did watch some virtual. But what was your experience like this past weekend? It was extraordinary. Uh, we had, you know, 3,500 uh, viewers. We, we we don't call them fans. We call them partners and family members. They were all gathered in one location in, in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, it was really overwhelming, not because of the numbers, but because, you know, I tried to have a personal connection with every person that was there at some point. And the amount of tears and the amount of uh, expressions of gratitude for the impact that the show is having means everything. And so we always like to say, no matter how big the show gets, uh, the work doesn't change. The blank page when it's staring at you for the future season doesn't care about uh, the success of the previous seasons or the number of viewers, but uh, the people, the people that helped us get here, the people that are being impacted, the person that is getting impacted uh, is ultimately why we do this. And that uh, we got a chance to see that firsthand this weekend. It was crazy. I have to tell you that uh, watching The Chosen has gotten me in touch with my sensitive side. Uh, I do oh, cry a lot, you know, get the wet eyes. And I think a, a lot of it, um, of course, is the dedication to detail, but also the music. Are you involved in the, the scoring of the music for The Chosen or is that something you hand off to somebody else? Yeah. So my involvement in the music was getting two geniuses in Dan Hasseltine and Matt uh, Nelson and saying there's no rules. And I think one of the reasons why the music has such a strong impact in the show is because traditional Jesus projects, whether they're, you know, uh, Bible, you know, single Bible movies or whether they're, you know, some of the many, many Jesus projects that have been done over the years, uh, they have they, they tend to have a very reverent, very kind of formal um, presented feel to them. And the music is, and also has a, a, tends to have a similar vibe. We're saying there's no rules. We're trying to uh, just do whatever it, it takes to capture the humanity and the authenticity and yes, the divinity of Jesus and of uh, uh, and and of course the humanity of the followers. We want you to feel um, like you're there, and that doesn't always mean just using you know like first century formal sounding music. Uh, we 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 we're playful, we're disruptive, uh, we're intimate, um, and yes, sometimes serious. And dramatic, but um, I think having those two guys has been one of the secret sauces of the show because they, that like you said, the, the music is is brilliant. Another secret sauce is the music that's contained in the theater productions, and so I have to point out that it was Brandon Lake's gratitude at first for us watching that in the theater, and then seeing the in between. It's like each time you have a different surprise, and so that's why I always recommend that people go to the theater. And now you have an even bigger experience. Yeah, so season four uh, is is going to be the first season of any television show in history that debuts in theaters. Now, of course, we're not going to make you sit through eight episodes all at once in a theater seat. Uh, many of us would 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 probably need to bring some sort of container to to handle our our urine. Forgive <laughs> me for uh, being so explicit, but uh, we we are splitting it up over the course of a month or so, where you get to see the first three episodes together, and then the next three episodes together, and then the final two episodes together. Um, but season four, I think, demands to be seen on the big screen um, because. The themes are bigger, the setting is bigger, the backdrop is bigger, we're getting closer and closer to Jerusalem and to what we know is coming. And uh, this is something that demands to be seen on a big screen with the surround sound. And also, I think it's important to see it with community, to see it with other people. If for no other reason, then you're going to be handing tissues to each other for your sensitive yes. side. Well, yes. you know, the uh, we hear from a lot of people that say watching The Chosen has helped them on their spiritual journey. And I've got to ask you, because you're right up next to it. How has working on The Chosen impacted your spiritual journey? Yeah, when you're tasked with portraying Jesus to the world in this way, it's very important to know him and to know him even better maybe than you ever have. And, and that's what I've been able to do over these past few years. And the thing that I've noticed more than anything else and that has impacted me is that Jesus is an intimate God. We oftentimes think of him as this great historical figure and we think of him as a you know as a king and we think of him as a as a as a god of the masses and he was that and he did speak to thousands of people but the majority of the stories in the gospels and i think the things that are most important to see about jesus are how intimate he was and how personal he was and how whether he was calling someone or healing someone or rebuking someone 
he knew what was in their heart. He knew what their need was. And he knew that he was the one to fill it. And if they rejected it, then he needed to point that out. And so um, that intimacy has been something that has really hit me over the past few years. And I hope that it continues to. And I think that's why maybe you experience that as a viewer is because it's what I'm experiencing as well. Yeah. You talk about the authentic Jesus and how you want 1 billion individual views. I remember speaking with Daryl Ives earlier on in the series, and he was very specific about 1 billion individual views, different people, the 1 yeah. billion. And so how close are we? And yes, I'm saying we, because we're we're all part of this. How close are we to that goal? Well, I I want to I want to make sure I clarify something. Yes, we've said we want you know a billion people to experience the authentic Jesus, and now our partners at the Come and See Foundation, who are helping get the show around the world into every corner and translating into six hundred languages, and making sure that we're reaching places that normal streaming platforms could never reach, they'll say uh, the first billion. Uh, you know, we want to show the authentic Jesus to the first billion because there's going to be more. But ultimately. Um, I think at this point, you know, I think we're approaching that goal. I don't know exactly because I'm trying not to focus when I'm writing, when I'm directing. I can't be focused on the numbers. I have to be focused on making sure that I accurately capture the character and intentions of Jesus and the Gospels. If I start thinking too much, and I'm not trying to, to skirt your question, but if I start thinking about the number of viewers or trying to avoid criticism or gain praise as I do this, I will be crippled. So my job is to focus on uh, the blank page and making sure that it's filled with something that's going to impact the one. Uh, and however many people are watching is not up to me and not something that I can be worried about. So I would love, I mean, obviously by the time I see uh, Jesus face to face, I hope that, you know, I hear well done, good and faithful servant. And, and I get a chance to see all the people that, that were impacted uh, by what God is doing. But I just can't be focused right now on that ticker that's uh, that's going up yeah. and up as the show grows. Yeah, that's that's good, though. We love that about you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of what we do on the radio is talk to the one. Now, yeah. I am a, I'm on the radio with my husband, but at the same time, I'm also a licensed professional counselor. And I'm thinking that I might have to set up some support groups after watching the season four teaser trailer because yeah. I, we were like in tears and we haven't even seen the show yet. Yeah, the trailer is what, a minute and 32 seconds long? And we're like, oh, my, look at uh -oh. How we're going to deal with this. You know, here's the thing is that um, we all know the story. If you've read the Bible, you know how the story is and how it ends and how what goes down. But still, we can't wait to see it. Yeah, and I think that's because, A, yeah, we do do some some, some, some things that aren't necessarily in Scripture that, you know, some historical, uh, that might be in history, but that we don't, that, that didn't show up in history, or sorry, that didn't show up in the Bible, or obviously filling in some of those gaps that lead you to some of these stories that are in the Bible, and we use historical context and cultural context. So there are always some surprises, and there will be those in season four. But I think what does allow this experience to not feel like too predictable, even though we know where it goes is the reminders that we're consistently getting in this show, that the followers of Jesus are not stained glass windows, that Jesus is not a stained glass window or a statue or a painting, that these were human beings who lived lives that experienced the same things that we are, whether it's poverty or oppression or division or questions, doubts, and struggles. We know Jesus didn't have doubts, but we also know that his followers, the ones who were with him every day and saw him firsthand, had doubts and questions and missed the point. And so I think the the experience of seeing that firsthand and living or seeing Jesus through the eyes of those who knew him, I think does allow it to feel fresh. And so that when we get back to the Bible, which is ultimately the end game, because we are not a replacement for scripture, when you get back to the Bible, where you get back to church, some of this stuff that has always been alive, the Bible has always been alive, sometimes brings you to life even more because you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'd never considered the fact that some of these people went through the same things that I am. I never considered the fact that they had the same questions and struggles and doubts that I do. And that does, uh, I think, well, not I think I know, because we hear it from millions of people. Um, it does draw them closer to the God of the universe. Yeah, talk about one of those changed lives, because that's one of my favorite parts of being part of the Chosen Insiders Facebook group, and also some of the fan pages that are out there, is the people that actually tell the story of how their lives were changed by watching The Chosen. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people say, how many people do you think have, you know, come to Christ because of the show? And I, I'm like, oh, we, we, we've we lost count, you know, a long time ago. Um, but the the stories that I even experienced this weekend, you know, it happened multiple times, uh, dozens. Someone walks up to me in a meet and greet line. And, and you know, the, the intention is we're just going to get a quick picture and keep moving because there's thousands of people. 
and suddenly we'll just stop because we know that some person needs to share something and needs to be heard and it's, they just immediately start crying and 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 uh there are people who've said um i've never i don't feel i haven't felt seen in decades or i had church hurt or i didn't know who god was and now i do and there was one story real quick I'll, I'll share that comes to mind from Brazil, where I'm in another country. And she wrote down in Portuguese her story and shared it to me on Google Translate on her phone because she doesn't speak English. And I'm reading this story as, as I'm waiting for her, as she's standing there, you know, waiting for me. And I, I, I just start, tears start streaming down my face because she's describing the fact that she had also had a, an issue of bleeding for many, many years, similar to the woman in the Bible with the issue of blood. And she had been teased by her friends. They'd call her the woman from the Bible, the, the bleeding woman. And she said, I, I I, was crying out to God, Father God. I even get emotional as I think of it because she was crying out to God, wanting to be seen, wanting to experience some sort of, of even if it's not physical relief, some sort of spiritual relief. And uh, it's when she saw that scene in The Chosen from season three, for the first time she felt seen and she felt like she could connect directly with God and talk to God about it. And she felt like God was telling her in that moment, healing is coming for you as well. And, uh, and now that when she dives into scripture, it's, it's, it, she's more alive than ever. And those are the stories that never get old. Oh, never at all. Never at all. I want to make sure that we cover Christmas with the chosen. And so what is going on with that really quickly? Yeah. So pr pretty soon we're going to release a trailer for the fact that uh, in December 12th through the 17th, uh, you are going to get an opportunity to see the very best of our first two Christmas specials, including a blending together of The Shepherd and The Messengers, the two episodes that I did five years apart. One was The Birth of Christ from the perspective of The Shepherds. One was from the perspective of Mary and Joseph. We blended them together to see what it would look like, and the results were bigger and better than we expected. Uh, Andre Bocelli, is uh, performed an exclusive performance of Oh Holy Night in Italy. That's going to be in this special. We've got a return of our, like you mentioned, Brandon Lake's gratitude. Uh, the, the 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 songs and performances from our previous specials that were the most resonant. Uh, we're bringing those back. There's going to be six of those in this special that uh, were the best and brightest from our first uh, two seasons or for our first two Christmas specials. So that's coming to theaters in December. Stay tuned for more info about that. Yeah, that's fantastic. So if we want to gather our friends and family and find out more about tickets or where's the best place to land? Yeah, just always check us out on social media. We're easy to find on all the platforms. And uh, and then as soon as we announce the exact uh, opportunity for the Christmas special, we'll give links to all of that. Thechosen.tv is always a place to go for information, www.thechosen.tv. But I know it's hard to remember a website. Just look us up. We're easy to find. Well, wow. and do it right when they come out because we found out with Chosen Con. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, right away. Go quickly. Yeah, well, things sell great, out very quickly. So, you yes, make sure with great attention. anticipation, we look forward to uh, season four of The Chosen. We're speaking with creator, director, and co writer of The Chosen, Dallas Jenkins. Thank you and God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.